Good afternoon, folks. This morning we hit the penetrating electric fields from space weather. These are hard to track and analyze, but we know they're very impactful. We showed a couple examples, one from the 2011 solar storm and another from 2003. These events occur at low and mid latitudes and can be triggered either by the magnetospheric compression during CME impact or by the equatorward traveling waves ignited by the excitement of the auroral electrojet. These can impact within minutes and are powerful electric actors. We saw those penetrating electric fields coupled with the geomagnetic induction during this week's big solar storm, triggering some significant enhancements that surprisingly came very close to levels that are concerning. Bottom of the screen, you can see the color legend where the purple starts to fade into white at 10,000 millivolts per kilometer, that's where we have a risk for major system outages and grid impacts. The strongest signature of the storm earlier this week was purple near the South Carolina-Georgia border. That is much more than we would have expected from a single CME impact off an X1 solar flare. And it implies that if it had been an X10, we could have had major grid problems across the eastern United States due to a cascading failure scenario. This tells us a great deal about the state of Earth's magnetic field decrease. We've taken many X flares in the past, we've taken X10s without grid outages before, but with the weakening of our planetary shield and the ongoing pole shift, this is becoming a serious concern, just like the auroras we saw break records last year. The purple signature here was way more than expected from this event, and it is not a good sign for our future. Now lastly today, people have been asking if the trickling solar storm energy could have impacted that barge in Baltimore that took out the bridge first. There is absolutely no way to know for sure. But what we do know is that after the ionosphere took the brunt of the impact, last night you can see the correction of that electric layer above our heads, which means the energy was being injected downward through the global electric circuit. That is when major power lines ground magnetic anomalies, and conductive pathways like rivers are expected to take the most impact. Furthermore, that barge clearly had two major power outages in the lead up to the crash and a possible engine fire indicated by thick black smoke. You are watching those outages and smoke release here just before the crash that took out the bridge. The power came back on seconds before impact, but it was too late again. Neither I nor anyone else could tell you for sure that the barge took an impact from the solar storm right before it hit that bridge, but the factors that would make it possible were in fact all there, and that is where we have to leave it. Last little note, our two most important books, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun and the Earth Disaster Cycle, are currently on sale. If you've been waiting, now is the time. Link below. I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.